The goal of this part is to check the debug environment we have, so we have it available for the whole training. We're going to see how we configured the two virtual machines, how we were able to configure the debugger, WinBag, as well as the disassembler and the compiler, which is Ghidra, and synchronize them together with RedSync. We are also going to see how we configure the Visual Studio project and SSH to push files from the debugger VM to the target VM. We are going to see all the steps that are required in this slide deck. And then at the end, I'll go over all the steps one by one and show you how to do them. Okay, let's get started. These tools are basically what we use every day when we are writing exploits. So for the course, we will basically use VMware to run the Windows target environment where we run the exploits, and then a second virtual machine to run a debug environment where we compile our exploits, and we will use Ghidra to reverse engineer the Windows binaries, or alternatively, you can use IDA Pro, and then we'll use WinBag Preview to debug the target VM from the debugger VM, and we will use RedSync, which is a plugin both in Ghidra and WinBag in order to synchronize the disassembler and the debugger. We basically provide a bunch of files for this course. There is a Ghidra project archive file that contains some reverse files with different level of reversing to show you how far you can go with reversing and you will try to replicate that. There are labs source code that you can use as a starting point when you're gonna be dealing with solving the challenges there are DLLs and executables used in this course, and they match the versions used in the Ghidra project. Also, it includes the vulnerable driver for the kernel transaction manager. It is named tm.sys, and we're going to need that in order to replace the, the old driver on the target VM. It is because at the moment, the target VM is patched to the vulnerability we want to exploit in this course. So we're going to need to replace that file with the actual vulnerable one. There are also interesting files such as configuration files for Ghidra or helper scripts for WinBag to help automate debugging experience and some cheat sheets to use Ghidra or WinBag. As a requirement for this course, you should follow the DBG3011 course for building two virtual machines one target VM where we run the exploits. We can crash the virtual machine and restore it from a snapshot. And a target VM where we write the exploit source code in a C language, build the exploit with Visual Studio, and automatically push the compiled exploit onto the target VM. If you don't have these two virtual machines ready, you must refer to this other course first for multiple reasons. The VM will be in a state that allows for working debugging and if you don't follow that tutorial, WinDBG sometimes break features and we tested that version so we know it will work for you. We also provide reversed engineered binaries in a Ghidra project that match specific versions that we know were used in the DBG3011 course. We will be providing actual labs, that is to say exercises in a format that can be easily compiled on the debugger VM. So the debugger VM can be named development VM and the target VM can be named vulnerable VM or debuggy VM. We are going to replace the tm.sys kernel driver related to the kernel transaction manager in the target VM with a vulnerable one. The procedure is basically described in the provided link, but it requires changing the ownership of the tm.sys file into C Windows System32 drivers folder, so you can then rename it because you have the right permissions. And then you will basically have to replace the old file with the vulnerable copy we provide in the tools reverse folder. From the DBG3011 course, you should have configured Windows kernel debugging already, and you should be able to debug the target VM using the debugger VM, using a batch script to automate the debugging experience. Kidra should already be installed from the DBG3011 course as well, but you are going to need to import the Kidra project related to this exploit course, which contains the DLLs and executables required in this course. After you import it, you should have created a GBR project file as well as a .rep folder containing all the project files. As a reminder, 
we are going to need to open the different kernel binaries and drivers into the same code brother so we can use RedSync correctly. As it was also explained in the DBG3011 course, we'll use the .rep folder associated with the imported Ghidra project when we're going to need to copy a RedSync configuration file in that folder. The RedSync configuration file sets up aliases for the DLLs and executables, so the synchronization with the WinDBG debugger works properly. And this is basically the environment we are going to be using. On the left, we have the Ghidra disassembler. We can see the disassembler window with assembly instruction and the decompiler window with actual decompile C code. We see the RedSync plugin is started and the configuration file was found. On the right, we have the WinDBG debugger. We can see the RedSync plugin was also loaded and the bang sync command was used to synchronize with the Ghidra disassembler. We can see both WinBag and Ghidra are porting to the same piece of code thanks to the RedSync plugin in TM Recover Resource Manager Ext at offset 8C. In order to confirm RedSync works properly in your environment, you can set a breakpoint in WinBag on a function like nt read file, and when the breakpoint hits, it should synchronize with Ghidra. Also, you should be able to step in WinBag and it should synchronize with Ghidra. We provide the labs in the Tools Labs folder. You're going to need to extract the Visual Studio Labs.zip archive and then run the build.bat script once in order to generate the Visual Studio solution and projects. This is because we rely on CMake to generate them. After that, you'll be able to open the solution and directly build the project from Visual Studio. Later, we will use the additional zip labs named part2part3.zip, but you should not use them at the moment. To check Visual Studio and SSH work properly, to push the compiled binary from the debugger VM onto the target VM, you can run the build bat hello command or build it directly from the Visual Studio project. Then you should be able to run the hello world executable from the target VM. This is what it should look like on your debugger VM. You can see the different labs on the left. And when you compile a given project, you should be able to see in the output window that it copies the file over SSH on the target VM. This is the final checklist that you need to go over to be pretty much ready for the entire course. So we want to make sure WinBag is configured properly and that the symbols are loaded and we can print a function from the tm.sys driver. We want to make sure the Ghidra project is imported and that the RedSync plugin is configured properly to allow synchronization between WinBag and Ghidra. And finally, we want to make sure the Visual Studio solution and PuTTY are configured properly to compile a project and push the compiled binary onto the target VM. So from the DBG3011 course, you should have two virtual machines, one target VM and one debugger VM. If you do still have some files from the DBG3011 course, we're just going to put them into a subfolder as we won't need them and we're going to replace them with the actual files from this training. The only folders that we're going to keep in these tools is Ghidra, which we're going to use, Gradle, RedSync, Installation, and the Season Tunnels. All the other things are related to the Hello World project, as well as the DBG3011 course. So you should have just this four folders in your tools folder. So now let's copy all the tools from the exploit 4011 course. So we can see we have some labs into zip files. We have some patch diffing files in C. We have some references. We have some uh, files that are the versions for the one we're going to target, so we can reverse engineer them. And we have the Ghidra project and some win, winbag scripts 
that we can use to automate debugging as well as some cheat sheets. So the third thing we want to check is that we can actually debug from the debugger VM, the actual target VM. So if you have configured it correctly using the dbg3011 course and you have booted the target VM, you should be able to use the patch script to actually debug the target VM. So let's start it. As you can see, it's connected to the target. And it's working. The next thing is to check the version of the tm.sys module. So we can write a note of this tm.sys file. So we know later after we've patched it that it actually changed. So let's detach from it. So the next step is to replace the tm.sys kernel module with the actual vulnerable one. So if you go into tools reverse, you'll see the tm underscore vuln.sys, which we're going to need to copy outside of the virtual machine and paste into our target VM. So for now, it's on the desktop on the target VM. So we're going to need to go into Windows System32 drivers. And here we should be able to find our tm.sys. This is the old version. Well, actually, this is the recent version. And we want to actually replace that with an actual older version that is vulnerable to the bug. So if you do try to replace that and rename it, it will tell you you don't have the permissions. Because we are not owning that file, so we can't do it. So in order to do so, you can follow the tutorial from here, which is basically to replace the owner of the file and change it from trusted installer to our own user. So basically, if you right click on tm.sys properties and then go into the security tab, then you go into advanced. And then in the owner, you can see it's trusted installer. So you can change that. Here you can look for IE user, which is our username. Then click OK. You can see it's been changed now. So you need to apply. It tells you you need to actually close and reopen the object's property before you can see the changes. So we click OK. OK. And now we go back to properties, security, advanced, and we can see we are the IE user. So if you go into the users here, we can edit the permission for the users and just allow full control. Apply. Just make sure you're doing it for tm.sys and apply. Now that you've done that, you should be able to rename the tm.sys to an old name. And now we should be able to copy 
the old file. Make sure to rename it tm.sys. So you should have the tm.sys from 2021 and the old one being renamed from 2022 or above. Okay, now we should restart the virtual machine. When the target VM reboots, it should hang during reboot because of the debugger being not attached yet. So we can see on our debugger VM, we only have one TM uh, that sees symbols downloaded for the PDB. So we are going to start the debugger and attach to the target VM. On the target VM side, we can see it hangs. And on the debugger VM, we can see it's not connected yet. Now it's connected. So we see we don't have additional symbols yet. If we break and do a reload, we can see now that it's downloading a second tm.sys because it's actually using the vulnerable version now. And we can continue execution to let the target VM boot. So in WinDBG, you should be able to break and then start disassembling a function from tm.sys. That confirms that you have the symbols downloaded correctly. So while you are attached with the debugger VM to the target VM, you may want to do a snapshot of the actual target VM in that state. So you do control M and then tm.sys replaced plus booted with debugger. Now basically, if you look at the actual files in the reverse folder, in tools reverse, you'll see the npfs.sys, ntdll, and ntos kernel on top of the, of the tm.sys. So we want to check that we have this version as well installed in the target VM. So to install the additional files on the target VM, we need to copy the reverse folder on the target VM. For instance, if we look at the ntdll.dll file, we see in properties detail, and we check the one in C Windows System 32, we can see that the versions are different. So we have to replicate the same technique for all the DLLs and kernel modules. So you can see that I have successfully replaced ntdl.dll with the old versions. I have replaced ntos kernel.exe with the old versions. If I go into system32 drivers and I look for npfs.sys, you'll see that in my case, the actual details for this version actually match the one from here. So I didn't actually replace it because it's the same version, so that it was not needed. Now that I have replaced all the files, I'm going to actually restart the virtual machine. So now the virtual machine is rebooting. We can see on the debugger side that it automatically reattached after the shutdown. And we're going to continue execution. And the target VM is booting.
Now if you go into C symbols and NTOS kernel or NTDL you see you see there are two now. So now all the files have been replaced on the target VM. So we need to do a snapshot of the virtual machine. If you do see a message like this, it seems it can just be ignored. And it's probably related to the fact that we've changed the versions of the DLLs and executables. As long as we don't use these executables, it's fine. And we can use the virtual machine. So let's shut down this virtual machine. And before doing that, we're going to do a snapshot of the booted VM. So the debugger is attached. And we're going to basically just snapshot, snapshot that virtual machine with Control M, all DLLs, XZs replaced plus booted debugger. Now we want to import the Ghidra project with the GAR extension. So we're going to start Ghidra with the Ghidra run.bat. Make sure no other project is actually loaded. Then go into restore project. Then look for the actual CV 2018 86 11.gar. You should import that project. Once you've done that, you should have on top of the actual GAR folder, you should have an actual GPR file as well as a .rep with all the actual project information. In the actual Ghidra project, you should see the different labs, the different files that we can load into Ghidra. For instance, we can double click on tmvel.sys to open it into the code brother. Before you can actually use RedSync to synchronize WinBag with Ghidra, you should actually copy the RedSync config file into the new project we've just imported. So you can see in this .rep folder, there is no .sync file. So if you go into Ghidra project, folder.rep, and you look into the .sync file, if you have the right one, you should see that there is a, a match for different files from NT kernel, npfs.sys, and tm.sys. So you're going to want to actually copy that .sync file into the actual dot rep or the actual CV 2018 86 11. Now that you've done that, you should be able to start Ghidra. So we go into Ghidra and run Ghidra run that bat. Now we can load our tmvl.sys into the code brother. As you can see, the configuration file was loaded and the aliases were found. We're going to also load the ntos kernel.exe. Now we're going to start the RedSync plugin with Alt-S. In WinBag, 
you should be able to just break and then load the red sync plugin as well. Then using the bang sync command, you should be able to sync with the actual red sync plugin in Ghidra. As you can see, we are synced with the right function, which indicates that the right executable is in the target VM and it matches the one from the actual Ghidra project that we have already imported. We can also set a breakpoint on one function like nt-read file. And continue execution. When it hits, you can confirm it actually also matches the function. Now we're going to check that we can actually build our labs with Visual Studio and push them onto the target VM. So if we look at the actual Visual Studio Labs archive, we see it has a folder inside. So we extract that folder here. And we can just run build that bat. So to do so, we open our CMD, go into this folder. Before we actually run the build that bat, we have to remember that it relies on SCP to copy files onto the target VM and an env.bat. So you have to make sure the IP address in SCP remote IP for both actually matches the target VM. So here you can see it ends with 92131. This corresponds to the actual IP address here. On top of that, you need to remember that a profile needs to exist with the actual IP address and you need to be able to connect to it. As you can see here, it doesn't work because SSH is not enabled. So we're going to go here and start SSH. Now, if we restart the session, we see SSH works. The IP address matched the profile in PuTTY. So now we can go on the CMD and start our build that bat with hello. As you can see, the build succeeded and the files were was copied onto the actual target VM and it worked. So now what we can do is we can go into Visual Studio Labs and go into the build folder and we can start the solution. As you can see, the hello world is there. And if we want to rebuild the actual solution from Visual Studio, it will be possible so you don't have to use the build that bad script anymore. So now we have everything. We have WinBag to debug. We have Ghidra to reverse engineer. And we have Visual Studio to build our exploits. Thank you for watching.